Make sure to use our code FLIPSIDE to get a two-week subscription to the Key Collector app. Welcome to Tales from the Flipside. This is our Prospect 10 list. Let's go ahead and get this started. At number 15, we have uh, Amazing Spider-Man 129, the Wizard Ace Edition. So this is an acetate cover that you had to mail in uh, through Wizard, and it reprints Amazing Spider-Man 129. I thought it was a pretty unique book because it not only uh, has the first appearance of Punisher, but also the Jackal, but this is also a homage of the original. At number 14, we have Hulk number 100. Yeah, this is an undervalued book. It's a second appearance of Amadeus Cho. You can get this book for nine or 10 bucks on eBay right now. But when you look at other second appearances like Miles Morales, Kamala Khan, Spider Gwen, uh, they all command a, a pretty good price. Any news on Amadeus Cho comes out, this book is, is going to be uh, one to have. At number 13, we have Power Rangers Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number one, the Eastman variant. So this is the first and only comic crossover of these two huge franchises. For kids of the 90s, it's like a dream come true. Now, it required two different publishers and two different licensors collaborating. So it might be the only crossover of the Turtles and the Power Rangers. I know there's been rumors of a follow-up, but that has not materialized. There are a bunch of variants for this issue. I like this one because it accentuates the color-oriented identities of the characters. You know, so there is a one in fifty ratio of this, but it without the color, it just it, it lacks something. And this was only orderable at FOC. So at most, there was a a, a week for retailers to order this. There's only 15 and 9.8. At number 12, we have Strange Academy number one, the second print. So this is a, a hot ongoing series right now. And the second printing uh, is still affordable. It had the same print run as the first print. Um, it's a great cover, a lot of first appearances. Uh, as far as second prints go, there, there is a value in second printings and later printings. But, you know, with any, anything can happen uh, in the next Doctor Strange movie and one of these characters could pop in there. And this would make that book I extremely uh, sought after. So it's just another one of those uh, cheap, affordable specs right now. At number 11, we have Batman number 428. This is the famous death of Jason Todd issue. Many might know that there was an 800 number to call in whether he lived or died. It was close, but he died. Of course, he came back later <laughs> as, as, as the Red Hood. Uh, but this is an iconic cover design by Mike McNola. Uh, for the time, it's especially graphic. This was a you know, 80s book, and, and you can, I mean, look at that bloody Robin face. But besides that, it's it's a hard black cover. Uh, I've owned a couple copies. I, I've never had a 9.8, or I don't think I've had any anything come near it. Uh, but these still can be had for less than $100 raw. Because of the hard black cover, there's only uh, 198 9.8s, whereas... In contrast, there's almost 500 9.6s. At number 10, we have Amazing Spider-Man 611. So this is a great Scotty Young cover. It's pretty early in his work. But what's really important in this book is that it's the first time you have Deadpool and Spider-Man meeting up. And so we have to introduce Deadpool into the MCU somehow. So we don't know how that's going to happen. It could almost be from anywhere with the next Spider-Man movie coming out, he could be introduced in that where they're crossing into different universes. You know, we might get a glimpse of him. So who knows? At number nine, we have Dr. Voodoo, the origin of Jericho drum from 2009, the one shot. 
so not many people know about this book. Um, it's currently valued at uh, $15. For people who can't afford the first appearance of Brother Voodoo in um, Strange Tales 169, this one reprints 169 through 170. It also has um, the first Brother Voodoo and the Origin reprinted. Uh, and it's a good cover. Billy Tan, uh, I've never seen this one ever and um, skulls and everything and how he's levitating, casting a spell. So uh, definitely pick this one up. At number eight, we have Lone Wolf and Cub number one. So obviously this was printed in uh, Japan first, uh, long before this first American printing of, of Lone Wolf and Cub. It is, I don't know if the cultural and literary influence can be understated. It introduced, I think, a, a lot of American comic readers to Japanese manga for the first time. It has a iconic Frank Miller cover. Um, the Mandalorian story was highly influenced by this story. The amazing thing I found was that 9.8s are still less than $200, and there's only 123 of them. And I realize this is the American first printing. I can imagine the Japanese uh, original printings, who knows how expensive they are. But uh, this is how, uh, you know, Americans, you know, know this book and know this cover. Uh, it's... Uh, kind of incredible that there's not more on the census and it seems undervalued to me. For our number seven book, we have Ultimates 2, number one, the Diodato variant, the one in 10. You know, let's just uh, take a take a pause and, and just enjoy this cover, you know? <laughs> okay, so this is a one in 10. <laughs> This is a, a, a great cover of uh, Amer America Chavez. She's coming out in the new Doctor Strange movie. This is uh, this is purely a cover by. I don't believe it's a, has anything uh, inside that uh, first appearance or anything like that. Um, it's just a, a great cover. Slab 9.8, probably about 150 bucks. If you find these in the wild, snag them. Uh, this book is only going to go up. <laughs> At number six, we have Season Beatings number one, the Kang variant. This is uh, yet another, this is a cover by. Uh, this is actually a Fantastic Four villains variant. You know how Marvel likes to do a theme variant every month. Well, there was a month where they, they picked Fantastic Four uh, villains for the variants. So I, I just, I, I, I love this cover. Uh, it's by Jurdevic, who was the Ultimate Four Fallout, uh, yeah, Ultimate Fallout 4 variant artist. And he's done some of the other uh, covers that uh, we like uh, from Marvel around the, um, over the past decade or so. Uh, the, so this book was a holiday one shot and Comicron says there were 22k units shipped. This is one of two open order variants. And you have to think to yourself, okay, it's a holiday themed book. There were only 22k units. There were two open order variants. How many are retailers going to order this one, which is just sort of random and you know not really related to the holiday theme of the book and, and, you know, retailers tend to go light on one shots anyway. So right. we have, we've had, we have Kang rumored in Lo Loki. He's getting his own solo comic series for the first time. And he's going to be featured as the villain, as we've been told in Ant-Man quantum mania. So I, I think this cover is a hidden gem. It can be picked up for $5 or less. Well, for our number five book, we have, uh, Winter Soldier number one, volume two, love one in 50. 
Yeah, this was uh, uh, this is the, a book that I nominated. I really like this book. Um, I've been looking for for a while. So Winter Soldier, this is volume two. It came out in 2000, the very beginning of 2019, very end of 2018. Uh, not very, not very huge print run. Only tw just over 26k for the whole series for all the covers. There's only three covers. There was this, or there was a an A cover. There was a one in 25, and then this is the one in 50. There is an error variant, from what I understand, of the A cover that I know nothing about. So I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about this one. Um, the reason this is important is it is the first appearance of the character RJ. If you were specking a few years ago, you remember RJ. He had his first cover, I think, on issue number two of this same series. Uh, he was a, a basically he is the next gen character uh, for Winter Soldier. It's hard to name a, a major hero in Marvel that doesn't have that doesn't already have a next gen character. Uh, Punisher is about the only one I can really think of. I mean, even Falcon now has a next gen. Uh, Vulture has a next gen. So. Um, RJ was only used in this series and then he hasn't been picked up since. And there, there isn't any word out there rumors. Um, but I, in my opinion, it's just a matter of time before he, he ends up on some lineup or in some story arc. Uh, and when he does this book, raw is going between 50 and hundred. I, I couldn't find any sales of 9.8. So there are about 10 9.8s on the census or actually under 10 that are graded total um wow. and it just hasn't been sent in yet you know it, it hasn't been a popular character yet but when it does i mean if the numbers work out and if they didn't overprint it 20 25 26k a 1 in 50 you're talking well less than uh far less than a thousand copies out there so this would be the uh you know to america chavez the vengeance uh, the Diodato variant or the, you know, this is the, the, the Jurdevic variant for the ultimate fallout for not that he's that popular, but, um, this would be the one to get. So if you can snag high grade copies and get a couple 9.8s, that would be worth sitting. For our number four book, we have spider Gwen number 19, the bubble gum variant. So kudos to uh, the person in the comments that mentioned this book. Um, I went ahead and did a little bit of research on the guts, and there's some interesting things about this book. It's the first appearance of the Gwenum symbiote. Uh, the, the symbiote is um, under the control of Dr. Elsa Brock, She's a scientist who people speculate is the gender, gender swap of Eddie Brock in Earth 65. So this is basically Secret Wars 8 for the Gwenum symbiote, uh, for the Gwenum symbiote, symbiote. And uh, that symbiote does bond with a, a laboratory rat. So you do get a little bit of action with that. Uh, you also have the first appearance of Officer Kinsey, whose partner is an antagonist for Gwenum. It's a great cover grab. Look at this. This is done by Clayton Crane. It's like a futuristic jubilee steampunk with the latex getup, purple, this, uh, not, sorry, this uh, bubblegum turtleneck attached to her attire. Looks like she did her here with bubble gum and she's playing with all different types of bubble gum like that she's blown up. I mean, this is awesome. So this is the resurrection variant. This ties in, this cover ties in with a, an X-Men event that includes like X-Men Blue and other X-Men characters that were popular in the 80s and 90s during this time. Uh, definitely a great cover grab. It's only four bucks. If you can find it, uh, I think Mr. Longshore bought them all. Did he? Yeah. Oh, all right. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm I'm totally kidding. <laughs> but yeah, if you haven't seen our bubblegum uh, down the rabbit hole series, uh, please check it out. That video definitely uh, inspired me to go look at this book. So, 
For our number three book, we have Marvel Comics Presents number 117. Yeah, this is a total uh, 90s classic cover buy for me. Uh, there, As we know, there have been a few of the Marvel Comics Presents that have kind of popped off in the last six months. Uh, some for content, some for covers. This one is a, is an awesome Sam Keith cover. To be honest, this is my favorite Venom cover, period. I, I uh, You know, Sam Keith is known for drawing... Uh, the Max, uh, one of the, the titles that launched Image. He's just really good at drawing those big hulking creatures. Uh, and and the way it, it, it plays with the trade dress. This is a flip book. Um, I, I looked into the guts. There's, there's really nothing in the guts that's all that important. Um, but this is one that people have been seeing in bins for decades now. And... Marvel Comics Presents has been overlooked for ages. So finding high-grade copies still out there uh, is going to be tricky. There's a decent number on the census, actually. There's about 59.8s. There must have been some signings at some point uh, with Sam Keith because he's got a bunch of SS. Um, but, you know, we've seen a lot of those class, just classic covers, just covers that people love. Uh, that have exploded in high grade in the last six months. So that's why I would be uh, keeping my eyes out for this one. For our next book, we have Vote Loki number three, the cover A. So this cover is done by Trad Moore. Uh, it's, it's currently a $4 book. In the guts of this book, you have the first appearance of Octavio Von Bardos and Doom's Children, who are followers of dr doom they're a terrorist group in latvia we know that terrorist groups have uh, come into play in the falcon winter soldier right so they could use this um in this upcoming loki disney plus series so i like this book a lot because of that plot that what does loki have to do to get in trouble with the tva and as he's running for president, he intervenes in an international con conflict, arms the opposing group against the terrorist group, and that opposing group ends up killing the Doom's children. So there we go. Maybe that's the intervention that gets that intervention got Loki in trouble with the TVA. So if that happens, this make this this book. That if that happens, the book's gonna pop because of that. Then you also have presidential candidate Loki kissing a black baby. And I mean, this is a I mean, if this happens, again, I could see a, a scene like this coming from uh in the show. And it, this this cover is really fun. You also have other moms carrying other babies, like an Asian baby and a white baby and a and a cowboy hat, like this is a cool cover, so it's not out of it's not out of nowhere that this can't happen. So uh, I really like this play a lot. Yeah, Phil, I really like that pick too. The what you said about the cover, I think, makes a lot of sense. I think there's a whole uh, a whole wing of spec that we could be doing on that because we've seen the MCU for ten years. We know at this point that Feige has these covers on a on a on a wall back there. And he's like, where are we going to put this one on screen? Where are we going to put this on screen? We have to see this. How are we going to get the story to the point where we see this on screen? So as they were digging for Loki moments to put in the series, I, I it makes total sense that, that this would be in the series at some point. Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, they don't, they plan everything, especially doing this Loki series so close to, uh, the TV show. I mean, uh, it's calculated. So, but that's a great spec. You know, if he's seen doing this, that book will pop. And for our number one book this week, we have Dr. Voodoo Avenger of the Supernatural number one, the one in 15 variant. So this book goes from, uh, goes for about 50 to $75. Uh, this is the first solo series about Brother Voodoo as the Sorcerer Supreme. 
Uh, it's also his first issue in his solo series. Uh, this is a cover swipe of Doctor Strange uh, number one, and this cover art is done by Billy Tan. Yeah, if uh, Doctor Voodoo takes on the mantle, right, of Sorcerer Supreme, this book just goes ballistic. And kudos to the uh, panelists that nominated this book. I didn't even know this one existed. Like, wow, this is yeah, same. amazing. Yeah, I don't think very many people know this book exists because there's only 10 graded on the CGC census. There's nine out of nine, eight and one, nine, six. Make sure to catch comic book women tonight. They have a new format, but the same great cast. <laughs>